Any questions for uh, our panel? Please give your name and affiliation. Keep the questions nice and brief if possible. Uh, I see a question right at the back. <laughs> Uh, and then there's Tom. also one there, and one just just there, just behind you, yeah. Okay, please, at the back. Thank uh, you. Tom Roth for, um, from the Access Campaign for Manuela. Uh, I'm interested in the medical costs. Do, do you have a breakdown of what, what is the contribution of in the medical costs? So what is the drug prices? What is the medical uh, practitioner costs, et cetera? Do you have that breakdown in a bit more detail to understand what's... Because it is a significant uh, block there, of course. Yeah, so um, from, the, from the survey itself, um, we did not break uh, these costs down specifically. Um, and the teams in Jordan are currently working on looking at this into more detail, especially also when we talk about prices for medication. Um, there's, um, there's some work uh, to be done. Our next question, please, if we take two yeah. at a time, yeah. Florian from Institute for Tropical Medicine, Antwerp. Also a question for Manuela. Um, I understood correctly that you only included um, refugee population in the survey, right? Yes. Yes, and so then one practical question, how did you identify refugee households from this random GPS point? And the other question is, do you have any information about the resident population, just to put your outcomes into perspective, whether this is actually like a, a bigger problem than in the resident population or not, which would uh, impact the, well, what yeah, you make so out of your findings, thanks. So the, the practical aspect, so we had these random GPS co coordinates over the uh, inhabited area and then we sent the teams to those GPS coordinates and asked them to identify Syrian household, but simply by asking around, asking pedestrians, shop owners, um, where the next Syrian household is. And the, um, the communities, so the, the Syrians and the Jordanians, they live pretty closely together. So everyone knew uh, where the Syrians lives, uh, live, and it's absolutely not a secret. So, and then from there on, um, it was uh, by referral. So from the interviewed household asking for a referral to the next household. Um, and your second question was on the comparison um, with the Jordanian community. Yeah, we, to, to some extent, um, we know that um, the, there are more females in the Syrian community compared uh, to the Jordanian community. Um, and, but we don't have a very detailed comparison because the, the detailed data uh, from on the Jordanians, they were unfortunately not available to us. So the ministry was not able to, to share all these uh, details with us. Okay, I think we had another question just on... It was there, this is Marit uh, from MSF Holland. Um, it was very similar question to the Jordanians. I could imagine that this, the host population has exactly the same problem. So what I get from your presentation is that we provide care only for Syrian refugees. Um, and not attending the host population with probably similar medical background uh, and might f similar have problems with the access to NCD care? No, the, uh, so the projects in um, MSF projects in, in Jordan, they also support the Jordanian community. So the last time, so at the end of last year, we had about 30% of the patients were actually uh, Jordanian uh, communities. And also, so uh, from the information we had now from the survey, the, the teams on the ground are also um, putting some more work into um, understanding the needs of the host uh, population and be able to identify the most vulnerable among the Jordanians so that we can um, better target uh, the support we provide there. Okay, some more questions, including uh, for Frank, if there are any, we have our translator. Uh, we have a couple of hands right in the middle towards the back. Uh, so we have to take two questions there, and then we have a third one here. We'll just take the questions first and then respond, okay? Hi, um, my name's Tish. I'm uh, MSF and Pediatric Infectious Diseases. Um, a question for Stefano and Frank. Stefano, um, you had no, nobody under the age of 12 in your hospital. Was that by design? Was pediatrics being treated somewhere else or 
just uh, no access in 11 months to children under 12 um, in your hospital. Um, and for uh, Frank, um, you demonstrated a significant drop in mortality. Um, could there have been other factors that influenced that seasonal? Um, you talked about not looking at um, sort of people coming and leaving, but was there a change in the broader context that could have explained that? Or do you attribute the reduction in mortality to the MSF interventions? Or, uh, no, actually, uh, in pediatrics is there. Can you hear? Do I have to do? It? I think no. it's okay. Yeah. Uh, pediatric is there. It's just that uh, we did not did we did not do any separate analysis for children. But if you remember, the median age was 20. So that means that, of course, pediatrics uh, are included. I I, I cannot provide you the exact numbers now because we did not uh, do you know, dedicated analysis, but if you're interested, that would be very easy to do that. Okay. Pour ce qui concerne l'effet de la saisonnalité, c'est évident comme la, la saison agit sur la, la prévalence des maladies telles que la malnutrition, le paludisme et la diarrhée, qui sont les maladies qui sont liées vraiment au temps, le, la malnutrition étant essentiellement liée euh, euh, aux baisses de disponibilité de nourriture, la diarrhée liée à un certain nombre de... de, de la, la diarrhée le, et la malnutrition liées à la, la pluviométrie. C'est évident que la saisonnalité a contribué à, à, faire, à, 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 à faire baisser euh, cette mortalité. Pour ce qui... Avec <rire> <rire> Yeah. Yes, you. with regard to the um, seasonality, um, this could obviously have had an impact uh, due to the variety of diseases when it comes to uh, malaria and diarrhea. We know that malnutrition is caused by the lack of availability of food, but obviously things like diarrhea are often impacted by rainfall. Donc, uh, uh, pour ce qui concerne uh, um, le, le dénominateur qui peut être influencé par le fait qu'on n'a pas inclus les arrivées et les départs, on n'a euh, on, 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 on pas quand même banqué, comme j'ai dit, c'est un, un lieu fermé, c'est un camp fermé. Il n'y a pas assez de mouvement de population parce que les militaires pensent que les populations ne doivent pas bouger pour éviter de rentrer en contact avec les gens de Boko Haram. Donc ce biais-là a été minimisé par ce facteur. Et en plus, ce biais a été minimisé par uh, 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 le fait que les périodes de rappel étaient très courtes. Donc, sur une période très courte de rappel, on, on a beaucoup plus de chances que les gens n'aient pas bougé du fait de cette limitation uh, uh, de mouvement dans le camp. Donc, à Banqui, tu ne peux pas voyager parce qu'il faut avoir l'autorisation des militaires avant de voyager. Tu dois rester dans le camp et tu ne dois pas aller voir quelqu'un de l'autre côté parce que si tu vas voir quelqu'un de l'autre côté, probablement tu es allé prendre quelque chose chez Boko Haram pour venir faire dans le village. Donc c'est barricagé. So with regard to uh, the other factor of not including uh, arrivals and departures within the camp, you need to remember that Banki is a closed camp. There is no possibility of movement. The military doesn't authorize people to move because they want to avoid people having contact with Boko Haram. Um, and also the fact that we did the studies in quick su succession means that we reduced the risk that people might have moved on. Um, and again, I would remind you that in order to move from the camp, you need military authorization. Évidemment, l'impact de ce de ce truc ne peut pas être lié seulement à l'intervention de MSF. C'est des facteurs combinés qui ont amené à la baisse de la mortalité et de la malnutrition. Merci. Um, obviously, the decrease in uh, the mortality rate isn't solely due to the MSF uh, intervention. There are other factors too. I'm just going to cut in there because we're running out of time. And I know we've got uh, someone up there with a mic who's got a question, if you could keep it brief. Uh, and we also have a question from our online audience. So if you could start at the back, please. Yeah. Uh, hi, Chantal from MSF. I have a question for Manuela. So uh, from our experience in Lebanon, we know that Syrians living by the borders can go into Syria and get their medication and then come back to Lebanon. Is that a case in Jordan too? Do they go back for meds or uh, doctor's appointments? 
So to my knowledge, to my knowledge the border is closed uh, completely, and I believe that uh, uh, that's either directions. So I don't think this is possible at the moment, but if someone has some more updated information. And Sorry, Jay. I had a question. So, uh, sorry, we're going to come to a question from the online so, audience here. So just one question from online. Um, it's a question from Manuela uh, about the access, so NCD prevalence in children and potential barriers to accessing that patient group and whether you think families prioritise children um, when seeking healthcare. Yeah, so the, uh, the prevalence among children was 3.5, uh, 3.2%, uh, something like this. And then the most prominent were the chronic respiratory conditions. Um, so generally uh, speaking, yeah, when we look at access to general uh, child health care and general adult health care, we do see that um, their parents uh, tend to uh, seek health care for their children more than they would do for adults. So those who do not access care among adults was higher than uh, compared to children. Um, we have in, indeed done um, very detailed analysis and we'll have that uh, complete report out uh, very soon, publicly available. Thank you. I think there's someone who's, who has a hand on a microphone. Yeah, I had Is a question that, there we are. for Frank. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, Claire Mills from OCP. Um, I just had a question. Um, given the very high severe acute malnutrition rate of the rapid assessment and the fall by the end uh, when you did the malnutrition formal survey, do you think it's realistic that that initial assessment was accurate or do you think it more shows the need for more comprehensive surveys in these situations? Euh, nous pensons que l'évaluation qui a été faite pour euh, la mortalité au début, c'est-à-dire le rapid assessment, euh, nous pensons que ce rapid assessment étant fait dans une situation où on a regroupé les populations dans une queue de vaccination, que ça pouvait, le, le niveau de mortalité pouvait avoir un, un, un biais. Parce que du moment où on distribue de plein pinot, beaucoup de personnes vont venir pour recevoir un aliment, ils vont amener les enfants malades. Ah, par contre, ce biais a été minimisé par le fait que dans Banqui, même si tu tapes, si tu distribues de l'eau, tout le monde va venir chercher de l'eau. Je, je, je vous donne un exemple très simple. On faisait la vaccination contre la rougeole à Banqui et on a vacciné une première fois et on voulait faire une seconde vaccination pour la classe d'âge de plus de 5 ans. Mais la plupart des mamans ont ramené les enfants de moins de 5 ans et quand on essayait de leur expliquer, ils nous ont dit tout simplement, nous on ne sait pas ce qui tue les enfants ici, tout ce qui est comme soin de santé, on doit amener les enfants parce qu'il y a trop de décès. Donc euh, ce biais du fait que comme on recoupe les gens et qu'on fait l'enquête de la malnutrition dans la queue de vaccination peut être minime. Évidemment que le taux peut changer un peu, mais pas dramatiquement. Pour ce qui concerne... <rire> Merci, ça va. Sorry. Um, we believe that the mortality rapid assessment that we carried out at the start was uh, right. Obviously, when we bring po the population together in the vaccination queue, uh, it makes it easier to carry out the assessment. When people come to receive the food, they obviously bring the sick children with them. Uh, but you need to bear in mind the fact that in Banki, even if you're just distributing water, everybody comes. And we have one particular example where we had one round of vaccination for under fives, and then the second second round of vaccination for over fives, and all of the under five children were brought again for the second round of vaccination, because people's response when we tried to explain was simply, oh, well, too many people are dying, so we need to come and get everything we can get. I'm just going to jump in now, I'm afraid, uh, for the, we've run out of time. Uh, but please feel free to find our panelists uh, over lunch uh, and ask them your further questions. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we're not breaking for lunch yet. Uh, we still have another half an hour. So we, we're, it's a change of, of tack here. So we're, we're uh, going to have more of a, a sort of roundtable discussion. So I would like to thank our panelists here very much.